Despite the fact that the city of Sudza in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is located in the rear, the Russians are wiping it off the face of the earth, throwing guided aerial bombs, shelling it with artillery and kamikaze drones, the ground forces of the armed forces of Ukraine reported. They are destroying their own, the message says. It is noted that on August the 30th, a Russian bomb hit a local kindergarten and in addition, enemy aircraft struck houses in the private sector in Sudza. Of the approximately 5,000 locals, about 200 civilians remain in the city who, according to the norms of international humanitarian law, are being helped by the Ukrainian military. The overwhelming majority of those who remain are people of retirement age, as one, they say in Russian that the authorities did not warn us about anything. We are abandoned here, the Ukrainian armed forces reported. It is also reported that recently, representatives of the new Ukrainian military commandment office established water supply in Sudza so that the local population would have access to drinking water. Previously, thanks to our military, this problem was solved with the help of water trucks and trucks with multi-cubic capacity tanks. Medical assistance to civilians in Sudza is also provided by the Ukrainian military. Recall that it was previously reported that, having lost control over the city of Sudza in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, Russian troops began to hit it with everything they could reach. So the occupiers allegedly want to drive out the Ukrainian armed forces, but in fact they are shooting at their own people, their homes and architectural landmarks. The Russian military uses both UABs and MLRS systems in order to allegedly knock out Ukrainian soldiers from the positions they have occupied, but instead they hit architectural monuments and buildings. FPV drones, Landsets, Zala and Supercam work very well, said Oleksiy Dmitrachovsky, an officer at the Ukrainian Armed Forces. It is noted that a so-called friendly fire was also activated on a monument to Lenin in one of the city's squares. In an attempt to destroy Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has created a strange economic model in Russia in which it is more profitable for Russians to die at the front than to live and work. This is written by the French newspaper Le Monde. As the publication notes, the Kremlin is trying with all its might to attract new volunteers to be sent to the front line. They are trying to lure them with huge cash payments that came from the federal and regional budgets. In July, Putin decided to double the monthly salary of contract soldiers participating in the SVO from 195,000 rubles to 400,000 rubles or $4,400. This is 10 times more than the average salary of Russian military personnel in peacetime. Added to this is a one-time bonus of 1.2 million rubles or $13,000 paid for signing a contract. This tax-free income comes with various privileges for servicemen and their families, including preferential mortgages, admission to the country's most prestigious universities without entrance exams, a comfortable pension and social status. And if such a volunteer dies at the front, his family will receive a cosmic by Russian standards, 11 million rubles or more than $120,000. True, the amount here depends greatly on the region. A strange economic model has emerged, according to which a dead Russian earns more for his family than a living one. In fact, if a man decides to go to war and dies between 30 and 35, that is, at the age when he is most active and in the best shape of his life, his death will be more advantageous from an economic point of view than his future writes Le Monde. As Russian economist Vladislav Inazentsev, who now lives in the United States, notes, this method of recruiting cannon fodder is new to Russia. In the past, soldiers were recruited with tales of patriotic duty or by simple coercion. Now, the average Russian who earns an average of $200 to $400 faces a colossal monetary temptation, which often outweighs the risks. One of the side effects of flooding the population with money is abnormal growth of the economy, which is maintained at an elevated level of consumption. This leads to the so-called overheating of the economy when prices rise rapidly due to the inability to satisfy the huge demand. The country's production capacity is exhausted. 
Russia has been engulfed by a wave of high inflation. Due to the overheating of the economy, prices are rising on a continuous front for food, gasoline, services, industrial goods. The draconian refinancing rates from the Russian Central Bank introduced many months ago cannot stop the growth of prices. Former Polish Prime Minister Jan Krzysztof Bilecki is convinced that the overheated Russian economy will collapse as soon as the war is over. Since Russia's current prosperity is based on huge budget injections into military production and payments to the military, as soon as the need for such expenditures disappears, many enterprises will be left without orders and millions of people will be left without work.